Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to talk about developing a custom Zabbix reporting solution. Of course, it's all written in AI. No, just kidding. It's not written in AI. But first things first, a little introduction. Who am I? My name is Nick Ornay. I'm a Linux DevOps engineer with Telenet. I'm also having my own company called Triple C, where I do consultancy for Linux and uh, Zabbix. And last but not least, I'm also a Zabbix certified expert. Who is Telenet? Telenet is a leading Belgium telecom and entertainment player. So we have around 2.8 million customers, 1.7 million internet customers, and around 2 million TV subscribers. But what is a telecom company using Zabbix for? Well, I work for the business department of Zabbix, where we offer monitoring as a service to our customers. How do we do that? We have our own multi-tenant design using host groups. We put proxy nodes on site with the customers. We offer them a secure connection towards our data center so they connect to our Zabbix instance and get monitoring their assets. And of course, we offer them custom reporting depending on the needs of the customer that can be daily, weekly, monthly, whatever. If you're interested about our multi-tenant setup, a colleague of mine did a presentation about that a few years ago, so feel free to check that out. So, how did we use to do the monitoring, the reporting? In the dark corners of the Zabbix Integration Hub, you will still find Avenue. Avenue is a tool that we were using to generate those reports in the past. But, there were some issues. Like you can see, it's not that user-friendly. It's a lot flexible, where you can add a lot of stuff, but it's not that user-friendly. It's also not the fastest application, which means it could take 40 minutes, two hours, before the report was generated. So that's why we scheduled it at night, mostly. And it could happen that sometimes it runs into errors. And it's not always accurate, which is one of the biggest problems. So for example, we filled in the complete report, everything we want, and then we can generate it. And we wait. And we wait some more. And then we have an error. That happens quite a lot. So the people who used to work with that, they were aware of it. So we say, okay, Try again, once or twice, probably it will work. So, until that point, it was not my problem. Until it became my problem. As you can see, broken images, links not correct, and the occurrences all set to zero. So at that point, we couldn't give that report anymore towards our customers. So we needed to come up with a new solution. We took a few possible options into consideration. The first is make improvements on Avenue. Why? Because it's less user impacting. The people already know the kind of report they're getting. It's the known evil, let's say. We don't need any extra dependencies, no, nothing else. It's customer ready. But it will take a lot of time to reverse engineer it. And also, it uses outdated technology. But I did some quick fixes in the past, so I'm not unfamiliar with the code. So, yeah, let's dig into that, right? How hard can it be? Turns out, really hard. There were no comments at all, no st clear structure. So, yeah, that was off the table quickly. The next option was checking out the native Zobbix reporting feature. That was currently that is now available, but wasn't available when we went for Avenue. So that was one of the possible options. We don't need any custom code. It's plain inside Subix. It's dummy-proof interface. It's a dashboard that we all know and love. And it's supported by Subix. And will be in the next future, I hope. But the downside is it requires dashboarding. And we don't offer direct dashboard to our Subix to our customers. We export the metrics using Grafana, but not directly to our Zabbix. 
So as it's a good solution, it's just not a good solution for our use case. So the last option was create something scratch. There are a lot of positive points of that. We have it self-managed, it's customer ready. There's also no extra dependency. We can add our custom styling. It's built on top of our custom multi-tenancy setup. And we can have the dummy proof interface that we want. So all the other teams in the organization can also use it. The big downside, of course, is development time. And you might never guess it. We have a winner. So we went for that solution. So how did we implement that? We had a few key requirements based on our experiences with Avenue. The first thing was we wanted to have it 100% Zabbix API driven. Why? We didn't want any external dependencies. All our information that comes in the report and in the report tool will be fetched from Zabbix directly. We did have some customized calls uh, to handle the multi-tenant setup but it's all based on the native API calls. We just handle the data and, and transform it like we need to. Also, the graph rendering is used, uh, the Zabbix. So if you go to latest data, you click on an item, you graph it. That's the same thing that we use to, uh, to fetch our graphs. Next big thing was we didn't want any headless Chrome. Avenue used that, and there were a lot of issues with that. Every time. There was an upgrade, some stuff broke, the styling broke, the reporting took a long time, so that was a no-go for us. That's why we went with the PDF library. It's a lot more flexible, but it also requires a lot more um, custom coding. For example, page breaks need to be calculated, if there's a table at the page, we need to close it, reopen the table at the next page, make sure that the titles and stuff are getting rendered correctly. But at the end, it's more future-proof. We also wanted the new solution to be scalable. So we didn't want to have any limits on the amount of reports or graphs that can be handled in the tool. And of course, we wanted simultaneous report generations. It's great that you don't have any limit on the amount of reports, but if you can only generate one at a time, it's not really useful. If you schedule a monthly report for your customers, that will run at the same time. So also scheduling, that is something that we wanted, so we don't need to do it automatic manually. It will uh, render automatically at the time for your customer. And the last is containerized. We want it to be future-proof, have it Kubernetes ready so it can run everywhere in the cloud on-premise. We are using uh, OpenShift. It's also high available and we have built-in CI-CD integration. So when we have some updates or quick fixes, everything gets built and deployed automatically. Also for scalability, we use uh, different queues. So for the rendering of the graphs, we have one, and also for the report generation itself. So we can just scale up easily the pods to handle more simultaneously load. Okay, so that were the key requirements, but how does the GUI look? Because that was also very important. We have a few components for that, and the first is the report overview. So here you have an overview of all your reports. We have your title, for which period the report will generate, if there are any schedules, when it was created originally, and you have few actions, so you can edit, you can delete, and you can also render your report on the fly. When you create a report, that's what you see. So you have the option to fill in a title, a subtitle, and then you can select your customers and add some filter options. That's where our custom multi-tenancy setup comes in place. And you have the option to select the pages you want. Then you can also add, add some trigger severity, the minimum you want, how you want to sort the triggers, and of course, the timestamp for which your report will be applicable. Next, you have your option to add graphs. 
You select your host. That data will be fetched automatically from Zabbix, so that Dropbox will be filled. And you have the option to select a predefined graph. That's the graph that we all know that is linked with your template or directly to your host. But we also wanted the ability to graph single items. So every item that is graphable inside Zabbix can be selected here and can be added to your report. You can add a description, which can also be useful if you want to have some more text and information towards your customer on what the graph is actually meaning. And if there is a service level agreement added to it, so your SLA, you can also select it if it's applicable. For the hierarchy, I used paragraph and subparagraph options. So we can add the title uh, in there or an information, and that will be used to build the hierarchy. And last but not least, you have the time settings option. By default, it will use the same time setting as your report, but you have the option to override it for per graph element. For example, if you say, yeah, I want um, information about my storage box, it might be not relevant to have uh, information uh, for a week. So we can say, okay, I want information for that graph for the last year. So that's how it looks if you added a few graph elements. So here again, you can see the paragraph and subparagraph, how it's handled in the hierarchy. You have your host and the graph title. That information is also fetched directly from Zabbix using the API. I've added some uh, indicator icons, so you can quickly see if there is a, a description added and if there is an SLA agreement added to that graph. If you made a mistake, if you say, yeah, I want to have this one moved on top, everything is drag and drop, so you can just drag, drop, wherever you want it to land in your report. And then, of course, schedules. You can add multiple schedules because you can have your monthly schedule towards your customer directly, or you can have uh, also a weekly schedule to the responsibility team so they can uh, do a more uh, proactive follow-up on the environment. So you can add multiple receivers to every schedule here. And there you see, again, an overview of all the schedules that are there, what's the recurrence, what are the receivers, when it will run next, and when the last run was. You can also see if it's running at the moment or if it's finished. So if you remember from the beginning of my talk, I said Avenue, it could take 40 minutes, two hours before completion. We have improved on that. It's two seconds now, so little improvement. And you can also download the latest copy of the, of the report uh, for future reference. Okay, so you know how you can create a report in, uh, in the tool, but how does it look like? We have a few available pages that you can easily select. So the first page, that is mandatory. You have your company logo there, the title and subtitle will be listed as well, and you have the report period for which the report is generated. Also, when the report is generated is added here, so that's also something that be, can be useful if you save those reports for future references. All the next pages are optional, so here you can see that was an example from our old tool. This is how it looks now. Then you have your table of contents. Everything can be in your company fonts, so you can just add your custom fonts in there. You can add your custom uh, company color schemes that will be applied in the complete report. And you will see your selected pages. So every page you selected with the, drop down, uh, with the check boxes will be listed here. And it's a uniform table of content, so depending on whatever you select, it will always be in the same order. So it's uniform for your customers. If you handle, if you give them monthly reports, they know the style and it will uh, be the same for everyone. And here, of course, you have your uh, hierarchy using the paragraphs and the subparagraph sections for your graphs. Everything is also clickable, so you can just click on any item and you go to, uh, towards that. So again, difference between the old one and the new one. Then the next page is your host inventory overview. Again, you see your 
host names, you see the interfaces, and a little color scheme because managers love to have colors, right? And then you have the templates which are linked towards your host, so you can have a high-level overview of what is getting monitored uh, for that particular host. You also have the option to add a page with the active problems at the moment of generation. There you can see, again, your host for which is applicable, the problem which is fetched via the API, the severity and how long that problem is already open. You can also see if it's acknowledged, yes or no. So, uh, yeah, we have a lot of open issues, it seems. Then you have a similar page, but that are the alerts that happened in the time frame of your report. So again, the same host name, description, and the severity, and the occurrence. So how many times did that particular trigger happen in the period of your report? It looks kind of similar like it was an avenue. The only difference is it works. We have the correct occurrences, which is very important, of course. You can also sort that with a sort option in the GUI. You can say, okay, I want to sort on severity first and then occurrence or on the host name. That can just easily select it uh, from the GUI. And then the graph pages. Again, for our managers who love to have some graphs inside the reports, there we have it. Again, with a paragraph and subparagraph for your titles and your hierarchy. If you add it, a comment or a description, it will be on top of your graph. And if you add it as a lay, it will be under the graph uh, and also all the other graphs that are selected in, uh, in your report will be visible here. And then last but not least, we have the SLA. There is an option to add a dedicated SLA page to your report where every SLA that is configured for that particular customer will be listed there. So we have the name that is agreed upon, you have the configured SLA, and the one that is calculated from uh, Zabbix itself. And you have a nice colored status. So yeah, everything is compliant, so we did a good job. Then there is only one thing for me to left to say. Is thank you for your attention. And If you want to know more, my socials are here, so feel free to reach out or come see me if you have any questions.